The problems for my videos can be downloaded from my website, tonybell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link. You'll see there's no sign in, no sign up, nothing like that. Just a hundred plus pages of accounting exercises. Many of the exercises are free and open, about 40%. And if you're working through those and finding you're getting great value out of them, you might consider joining and getting a channel membership that has access to the other 60% of the videos. All right, let's jump into today's exercise. Let's take a run through problem 91A, direct materials variance, a wonderful sample problem. I do apologize. You're probably wondering what happened to Tony? Where did Tony go? Who's that cool guy in the sunglasses? It's me underneath here. I just had an eye issue. I'm really sensitive to light these next few days. So I'm going to be wearing sunglasses in my videos for a little bit. I apologize for that. I know I have gorgeous eyes. I know that's a big part of this channel's appeal is my beautiful eyes, but you're going to have have to deal with them being behind sunglasses for the next few uh, videos. Anyway, here we go. Steve's Sausages begins business in March. In planning his business, Steve sets the following materials standards. Okay, we're going to need to know our standards versus our actuals. That's what materials or well, any variance is all about. Each sausage should take 250 grams of pork and 250 grams is 0.25 kilograms and pork should cost $10 per kilogram. Therefore, each sausage contains $2.50 of direct material, or should contain $2.50 of direct material. In March, Steve purchases 80 kilograms of pork for $740. Steve makes and sells 300 sausages and has two kilograms of pork remaining on hand at the end of the month. Compute the materials price and quantity variances. Now, in the workbook, I've given you this little table that you can fill in. When I teach the class and when I test, I don't give my students this table, right? They just have to remember it. So hopefully in practicing this, you'll get very comfortable and familiar with this. But let's begin with just the left prong of the table. You can see it's based on material purchased and the right prong is based on material used. And that's a little thing that can trip you up with materials variances. You have to have two separate prongs. If you've done a few of these, you'll see the labor and overhead. There's like one together. Material is a little different. We got to distinguish between material purchased and used. So anyway, what's the actual quantity of material I purchased? Well, materials, you're going to measure it in some unit of measure, like a kilogram or a pound or an ounce or a liter, some unit of measure, because that's, you know, how you would measure a material. And in this case, we bought 80 kilograms. The AP is the price we paid per unit. So how many price what was the cost per kilogram? Well, we know we for 80 kilograms cost us $740. So 740 divided by 80, it cost us $9.25 per kilogram. So that's AQ, that's AP, multiply them through 80 times 9.25. 740. Okay, AQSP. Well, the actual quantity purchased is 80 kilograms. The standard price, how much should pork cost per kilogram? Or when Steve began business, what did he think co pork cost? And it was 10 bucks a kilogram. So $10 per kg and 80 times 10 is 800. Okay, now we have our first variance. And you can see the difference here is just the, the variance is the difference between the two prongs. The difference is 60. But we have to say, is this difference good or bad? And we don't use the word good or bad because that's uh, not sophisticated like us accountants. We say, is it favorable or unfavorable? Is this favorable or unfavorable? Well, the way you do it is you just look at what's different. The AQ, AQ, that's the same number. So you look at the price, you go, well, I thought I was going to pay $10 a kilogram. I actually paid $9.25. Is this good or bad for me? We got a deal. Of course, it's good. This is a favorable materials price variance. Let's go over and do the quantity variance now. Now, if we don't use 80 kilograms as our AQ, we have to figure out what was the quantity of material used, not purchased, but used. And this last sentence gives it away. In March, Steve purchases 80 kilograms of pork for $740. Steve makes and sells 300 sausages and has two kilograms of pork remaining. Okay, so he bought 80 kilograms. He has two kilograms remaining. He must have used 78 kilograms in making those 300 sausages. So the AQU 
used, the actual quantity of material used is 78 kilograms. SP remains the same. It's supposed to cost $10 per kilogram. So 780 is what's on this prong of the calculation. SQSP, well, SP remains $10 per kilogram. SQ, to do SQ, we need to answer this question. At the actual level of output, how much, in this case material, but we'll do it for labor and overhead, how much material should it take? So at the actual number of good units produced, how much material should it have taken? How much material would Steve have guessed it would take? So we actually made 300 sausages. If before the month or the week or the, you know, before March, I told Steve, hey, you're gonna make 300 sausages. How many kilograms of pork would Steve think that was gonna take? And Steve figures it takes 0.25 kilograms, 250 grams of pork per sausage. So if Steve's making 300 sausages and it takes 0.25 kilograms per sausage, Steve would figure this should have taken him 75 kilograms of meat. Now he's off a little and we're always going to be off a little. There's always, you know, maybe he had to throw some in the garbage, maybe just, you know, packed a couple of the sausage casings too tightly. I don't know, but generally you're never going to be perfect here and he's off. And so, uh, he thought though, if he was going to make 300 sausages, it would take 75 kilograms. And let's just return to this because you're going to have to do this in every problem. This is the one that trips students up when they're doing variances is the SQ. Uh, so it's called standard quantity allowed <laughs> um, at the actual level of output. So given the fact that Steve made 300 sausages, how much material should it have taken? And the answer is should have taken 75 kilograms. That's what Steve would have guessed it would have taken. So 75 times 10, that's 750. What's the variance 780 to 750? The variance is 30. Now, is this a good variance or a bad one? I don't, I shouldn't say good or bad. Is this a favorable variance or an unfavorable variance? And the answer here is, well, you just look at what's different. The 10 and the 10, that's the same. 75 versus 78. So it actually took him 78 kilograms of sauce of, of pork. It should have taken 75 kilograms too much pork, right? He was wasteful. This is unfavorable. They used too much pork. Why? They might've thrown some in the garbage. They might've just uh, overstuffed the casings. We don't know why, but he used more pork than he, he figured on using. So that is unfavorable pork usage, an unfavorable direct materials quantity variance. So overall 60 F and 30 U combine for 30 F, right? Take the F minus the U and there you go, right? We end up at 30 favorable overall for materials variances. All right. You know what would be even more favorable? If you hit one of those buttons, if you think these glasses are cool, and I think they're cool. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a super cut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.